we have seen new developments in the field of AI and there's again a lot of hype about it right away. Experts know it, after the hype comes the valley of despair. Is there perhaps a fundamental problem with AI? Today's topic is not only for techies, students and engineers. It could be also interesting for economists, lawyers, politicians and also for investors. If you expect AI horror scenarios or exaggerated sensations, then you are wrong here. I'm not a science fiction author, nor am I a promoter who wants to collect money for a new AI business idea. And I'm not going to tell you what you can read about AI on Wikipedia too. Here is someone who developed practical applications with AI and would like to humbly share his assessments with you. No sensations, no exaggerations, no hype. Welcome in the most boring video about AI on YouTube. I'm a big fan of AI, but I just gotta tell you, there are issues that we should talk about. So stay tuned anyway. Maybe my thoughts will help you to ask the right questions to better assess AI applications. You know, media are again full of hype and horror scenarios on the subject. The terminology artificial intelligence already led to exaggerated expectations which have been disappointed. It is no surprise that we have seen several ups and downs with AI over the years. I will now give you a simplified explanation of how AI works, but it is sufficient to understand two basic problems. And now might be a good time to subscribe to the channel. If you want to know more details about it, I recommend the link below in my video description. We imagine a black box that can be fed with numerical data and it is giving back numerical data as an output. Now we need some logic that transforms images, data, sounds, etc. into a number space that can be processed by our black box. I call this normalization. For the output of our black box, we need something similar in reverse. We have to interpret the numerical data delivered by the black box. An example for this would be, if an output value is between 0.9 and 1.0, then a cat has been detected in an image. If the value is between 0 and 0.5, then no cat was detected in the image. There is now a human decision behind it and nevertheless there could be a cat in the picture with this result. But the probability of this is lower. The black box is fairly complex inside. Experts call this a neural network inspired by a network of nerve cells. This network is simulated by computers, recently even by using special hardware. You have certainly heard the terms neurochip, neuroprocessor or similar because they are already built into some smartphones. The cells of the network, they are called neurons, have a non-linear transfer function and are connected to each other via many weighted couplings. There can be several levels of these neurons and even sequential processes. The mentioned connections can be hundreds, thousands, millions or maybe soon even billions. That depends on how complex the problem is that we want to solve. We can adjust the weighted connections from the outside in such a way that we get certain result data that we want to have for certain input data sets. Many data sets are offered to the neural network at the input 
and the output data is compared with the desired result data. Then we vary the weights until we get the desired output data for certain input data. This is called training the neural network with training data. The data could be anything that can be represented in digital form – images, videos, numbers, text, sounds, etc. The neural network has an abstraction ability after that training. If it has been trained on cat images, then it recognizes a cat on any other image that has not been trained. What I'm saying here in such a simple way is actually quite complicated and you have to do a lot to prevent a dog, for example, from being recognized as a cat. In the past few decades there has been constantly progress in research and in the performance of computers. But the basic principle has remained the same. The method can be used without having to think about the exact functions inside the network every time. But you experiment with the number of neurons, the levels and possibly with sequential processes in order to adapt the neural network to the type of problem you want to solve. There are many great examples that work well. And by the way, here you can see what a successful training looks like in numbers if we pick two of these many weights. But now I would like to explain a very important issue that is mostly ignored in the public discussion. The solution is the problem. I'm comparing the method with a functional approximation to explain the issue. Experts describe the typical requirements for an AI method as follows. Low accuracy required, many parameters, lots of data, generalization and abstraction required. And that alone tells us that we cannot expect a very accurate result from a neural network. And it's even worse. You can't rule out that the result is wrong. Especially when we use input data that is numerically far from the training data. In this case the probability is even very high that the result is wrong. It's kind of like trying to extrapolate outside the scope of an approximation formula. Then you get the result, but it's usually wrong. It is very similar with a neural network. But in case of AI we have the problem that we cannot easily define the scope for our input data. The neural network tends to always come up with a solution, even when there really isn't one. I have a very simple problem here that illustrates this well. We take a neural network that we train with two simple arithmetic problems. 1 plus 1 equals 2 and 3 plus 3 equals 6. If we train the network with it, it will be able to solve these two tasks exactly. The network will also be able to generalize. For example, we can now try 2 plus 2 which we haven't trained before. Then 4.01 may come out as a result instead of 4. But okay, for many areas this accuracy would still be sufficient. However, tasks 9 plus 1 or 7 plus 7 could result in something right or something totally wrong. We just don't know because we can't train and test an infinite number of arithmetic problems. Well, now you could of course say we simply train more arithmetic problems. That would be a possibility for improvement, but it would not solve the problem in principle. Because with real problems there are many more degrees of freedom in the input data so that the necessary number of training data and test data increases exponentially. We have to live with limited training and test data 
And that means you indirectly allow uncertainties and wrong results. I was able to successfully use a neural network already many years ago. And based on this example, I would like to explain to you another problem when using AI. It is about the prediction of radio wave propagation, which is used to plan almost all radio networks. Since the typical requirements fit quite well here, I started to develop a concept for the implementation with neural networks. And this is, by the way, the hardest part of the job. It is also decisive for whether the whole thing can work at all. To put it simply, you have to transform the physical conditions in numbers that a neural network can process. If you are interested in the details, you are welcome to read the publication, which I also linked in the video description. I was the first to use this method in this area, and there are now hundreds of publications on it. Now one wonders why the new method has not been adopted immediately by all software manufacturers in this area yet. Well, that's simply because there is a second fundamental problem with AI that just hasn't been solved yet. We were not able to understand how a neural network learned something, although its implementation is well known. The complicated structure of the network, with the many neurons and the nonlinear transfer functions, which are also coupled to one another, has prevented it from being really understood to this day. And that brings us back to the first problem, namely that we cannot guarantee that false results will be ruled out. Knowing that, you might prefer to continue living with the old, possibly unsatisfactory methods whose weaknesses you can better assess. Or do you know any software in this area that uses AI? Write me in the comments. Now, what is missing? In general, from my point of view, there is a need to explain much better how a neural network learns. Okay, there are strategies with test data, pre-trained subnets and much more. But in my opinion, however, proper methods and tools are lacking. Admittedly, it is not easy to understand a system with thousands or even millions of nonlinear transfer functions that are somehow coupled together. This requires new ideas and methods from people. That's called science. Instead, I keep seeing stuff that looks like sleight of hand tricks that amaze people. And yes, of course, you need brute computing power, but it doesn't really help to solve the fundamental problem. Which AI applications could be successful in the future? My humble view as a former researcher and user of AI is the following. Chatbots that use limited, correct and consistent data are sure to be successful. Big data filtering, indexing, pattern recognition, etc. already works well today. Um, here we will see further improvements. Clever adaptation is important for new ideas, i.e. transformation and normalization of data. I would at least see the potential that it could work well. In the creative field, no question, it works great. Both of our problems don't matter here. If you need proof of correctness, then it becomes difficult for an AI solution. Replacing a deterministic method makes no sense at all. We have already seen this in our simple example with the arithmetic problems. If there is no solid method for controlling the AI, then you already cannot map the problem. I would say little chance of success. With inconsistent data, or if there is no correlation between input and output data, then of course an AI application cannot work either. Uh, but of course uh, this is also a killer for other methods, leaving the user desperate. 
your chances with AI. A neural network can abstract and generalize, which is a blessing. A curse is that the accuracy of the results is not guaranteed. This is actually similar to humans, unfortunately. However, a computer works much faster than a human and therefore AI is an important tool that can relieve humans of a lot of work. For many users, AI tools are a must in the future. Try them and use them if you can improve your efficiency or the quality of your work. So just try it yourself with Chat, GPT, DAL E, Lambda, etc. Maybe you can use the time gained to think about new content and ideas that AI doesn't offer you. I think it's great that there are more and more applications that anyone can use. But I would warn against having AI write entire papers, homework, etc. Even if you manage to fool your teacher, you're still harming yourself. Because you then miss an opportunity to independently work on the topic and explain it. And this is exactly what distinguishes people who are given responsible tasks independently from those who work through standard tasks and are then also in danger of being replaced by AI machines. Especially when it comes to text, you have to understand that AI always looks backward into the past and not forward. With specialist knowledge text, I would always be extremely careful and would check very carefully whether everything that AI gives me as a result is correct. My experience with this is that simple standard questions that are often described on the internet are answered quite well. In the case of most technical questions that require additional consideration or intellectual transfer, the answers are usually completely unsatisfactory. AI does not replace the knowledge and methods of a professional. It only finds information faster if it is available in a database. In the creative field, you can really have fun with AI and you don't care about these problems. You can create images, compose music or simply create funny texts. For developers, AI is one method among many that exist in mathematics and in the IT world. This method works well for some areas, but not at all for others. Unfortunately, if we look at the experience we have with modern AI applications, we still see the old basic problems. Maybe someone among you will solve the problems that no one has solved yet. I would really see that as a huge step forward, but beware, this is really very difficult, maybe even impossible. I hope the video helped you a little to better understand the possibilities of AI applications. So you can perhaps also take a more relaxed view on the hype when there is talk of quantum leaps again. I would like to quote the Nobel laureate Anton Zeilinger here. The quantum leap is actually the smallest imaginable leap in the universe. <laughs> so maybe we will meet again in despair valley. But seriously, I think what really needs to be acknowledged is the evolution of the user interface on the platforms mentioned. They are really the best chatbots I have seen so far. And chatbots don't necessarily have to answer the big questions in the world. For example, it would be of great value if they helped us to operate or troubleshoot a product. And I'm pretty sure that will work well. In any case, I think it makes a lot of sense for students to learn AI methods just like they should learn other mathematical methods that they need for their job or hobby. But we need to be prepared that the one or the other hype will turn into desperation 
and serious business will develop only at a low level. But this problem always existed with other innovations as well. Now stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.